Yo! Yeah. You remember this talk, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All man. right, let's get into this. What are you saying? What are you saying? Abs, you good? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good. I'm excited for this one. You're still, excited man. for this yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, because I wasn't obviously part of the team yeah. when you've done the, <laughs> the last, the last, one, last Paco, you know, it was just you two. So now nah, it's a little bit different, obviously. I'm sure Paco was thinking flipping out, bro. Yeah, <laughs> this yeah, is bro. So, this different. so if you haven't recognised the voice already, but welcome back to Paco, Paco Craig. Thanks for coming on the pod, bro. bro what are you saying? Thank you for having me, man. It's a pleasure. Course, and um, I'm loving how much you've grown. We've got the yeah. new edition. We've got the new edition. <laughs> We've got a new co-host and that. So for those of you who haven't, like, go listen to it now. It's on it's on Spotify podcast and and. Apple Podcasts and all the usual places, but Paco is actually on the first season. We was actually doing a little bit of mobile podcasting these times, so we went out to his place mm -hmm. in North London and um, recorded a pod just about his journey up until, I think it was about Jan 2020 at the time. Mm -hmm. And obviously now the pod's changed quite a bit since the last time we was on. We got lighting, we got cameras, we got a new co-host oh, in a yep. new setting and that. So yeah, we just thought it would be good to get Paco back on as a, as a detailed on Mac OG and um, talk through a couple of things. So Paco, where are you Where are you currently living at the moment? So right now, um, I'm based in Miami. Yes. <laughs> it's brickle, for those who know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And uh, no, I'm just home for the holidays because the season's over, but yeah, I'll be yeah, there again yeah. next year as well. Sunny Miami. Yes, so I yeah. think the last time we spoke, you were at Wickham? Yes, I was. I believe, yeah, we, you was at Wickham. So how did it come about that you've gone from going from Wickham to, to playing for... Miami FC. Yeah, the two, yeah, nice and simple. Miami yeah. FC. <clears throat> yeah, it's a bit of a jump. Yeah, yeah. Wickham, I remember cold winds next to a farm, <laughs> you know, <laughs> warming up, smelling the cow shit on, on the side. Yeah. So um, it's been a long journey, but basically, uh, like most people, uh, the lockdown completely X'd me off, mm. finished me. And like, luckily, I guess, like, it didn't hurt me as hard as it did, like, most public, you know, mm. so I was lucky for that. For sure. But it definitely stunted my uh, my ability to try and find a team in England and in Europe. Couldn't go on any more trials. I spent the whole summer. So when the lockdown happened, Wickham basically were like, oh, we're not going to keep you on. Uh, we're just going to keep the guys we have because mm -hmm. we don't even know what's going to happen. Um, so they trimmed me. And I went back to being a free agent again and working on my own, doing a lot of uh, individual training. Yeah, of uh, course. And... Um, and I use the time really, like most people too, hopefully, to, to take a breath and take a pause because when you're locked in the house, you can't do anything. Um, you just, you have to look around and say, what can I do, you know? So mm. it, was, it was a pretty uh, relaxed time. Um, unfortunately, you, though. Sorry, would on. you say it's a, well, it's a, quite a difficult time though? Because I know, obviously, oh, yeah, the pod yeah, we had yeah, before, yeah, yeah. obviously you'd come back with aspirations to come and try and make a name mm. for yourself in Europe and stuff. And then out of nowhere, this mad virus comes and locks everything down. So it's kind of out of your control. Yeah. So was it a difficult time when they were coming like, yeah, sorry, we're not going to keep you because of the uncertainty? It was. It was. And like, and obviously at the time, emotionally, I was really distressed, upset about it. Mm. Like, you, it's a big, I turned away contracts in America to mm. try and play in England and Europe. Mm -hmm. And up until then, the trials were going all right. And I was feeling pretty encouraged by them. Mm. But um, but when they told you that, you're like you're thinking like, what have I done? You know, like yeah. I could have I could have secured. A, I had a, if I had a guaranteed contract, I'd have been getting paid by sitting around. Mm. So yeah. obviously, all that stuff's going through your head. You're like, I could have just been you know chilling properly. Yeah. 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 Um, but thankfully, um, I think what helped me out a lot was I had a really good family around mm. me. I was lucky to be at home with my family. Okay. Yeah. And having spent eight nine years in America, um, I was like, okay, uh, this is really not ideal, but at least I've been given an opportunity to just spend uninterrupted time with my family. I'm lucky enough to have a, my parents have a big house and a nice garden. Okay. And we were blessed with mad weather that summer, yeah, somehow, yeah, yeah, which yeah. for me already, I think as well, there's something going on there. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, was, it was unusually nice. So um, as frustrated as I was and upset, I was able to look at the positives and just enjoy a really good, peaceful time reconnecting with my family. Just, just from me, so what, Obviously, spending so long away, you was, you was away for what, eight, eight, nine At years? At that point, it was eight years. Yeah, about yeah. eight years. What made you all of a sudden decide that you want to come back as to the UK or as Europe? A, without sounding too, without bragging too much, yeah. I basically completed the USL. Okay. Like, um, and what, and when I say that, I mean, in the four years I was with a t uh, my, my team, yeah, we were 
I won the whole thing twice in a row. Okay. And then the other two years, we were in the playoff final. So obviously America does things different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So guys who know NBA mm -hmm. know that after the season's done, the playoffs start and East and West compete and then the winners play each other in the championship. Mm -hmm. And so in all four years, I made it to the championship game. Oh, okay. And for two years, my team won it. Mm -hmm. And two years in a row, I was in the first 11 of the league, you know, okay. like the team's best 11. Oh, okay. And two years in a row, I was like considered, I was in the top three defender of the year mm -hmm. and never won it, but I was always- In there, in the yeah, mid, yeah, yeah. Same thing happened again this year. And so after four or five years of it and always hearing from the MLS that I needed a green card because I'm taking up an international spot, I was like a bit sick of this. I basically hit my ceiling. What, what, when you say they're telling you that you need a green card, just some people won't understand yeah, what yeah. that is. What, what, what's the pressures of that? Or what, why are they coming at you? So um, in the MLS, you're only allowed seven international spots per squad. Okay. And obviously they reserve those mainly for the players that are going to raise the profile of the club. Okay. So they're bringing in like, obviously throughout the years is Pirlo, Beckham. Yeah, 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 yeah. Zlatan. Mm. Um, Higuain now into Miami. So like they usually save the internationals for- How many, how many spots did you say? Seven in a squad for, of- For like, each squad? Yeah, so okay. one team's only allowed seven internationals. Okay, okay, yep, yep. And then in the squad of what, 26 mm. or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, so they're precious. Yeah. And because I was more of a guy who proved himself in the lower leagues, if they signed me, they're not going to get more Instagram followers, you know? Nah. Like, like It's not raising the profile no, of the club. You're enough. not going to yeah. sell more tickets. You're not selling more shirts. Mm -hmm. you, no one really cares, apart from unless I take time to prove myself and then the fans might like me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it, like, it, without sounding bitter, it was, for me, it was a purely a business decision. Yeah. Because, like, in any other league, we'd have earned the right to get promoted twice in a row, you know? Mm -hmm. So, we, our team was good enough to deserve the right to play in that league. Okay. And I was never getting the opportunity either. And I was one of the prominent players. So wait, when you so did your team get promoted? No, there's, there's no, no promotion, promotion relegation, relegation in America. America. Oh, I, it's a I joke. didn't know that. I didn't it's know a that. Joke, oh, okay. Man. So yeah. you can't, so you just win it and you're saying- And you start yeah. again. You just start so again the same So teams. how does a team go up? Yeah, you don't. You have to pay, bro. You, to get into the MLS, you have to pay 110 mil, I think, or something, or 100 mil. And then what, they just make a new spot for you? Yeah. Yeah, so basically yeah. how sport, so if there's less, it's, it's how business, sport works, how sport works in America is there's franchises. And if you want to create a new franchise to go into that league, you have to like pay to enter the league. There's no like promotion and relegation. You have to buy. So there's a, a fixed space. so like NFL, NBA, all these are like fixed number of teams in the league. And for a new team to come in, an investor has to come in and say, "I want to invest in this city, and we'll bring the team to the city." So there's no okay. promotion. There's no promotion and relegation. Yeah. So I was getting a bit fed up of just and yeah, dominating, yeah. and because it's hard every year to get yourself up for it to yeah. win again, you know. Of once course, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Once, you've once you've done won it a few once, times, it comes. You're like you're you know like, the I'm players. Like, do this you know all the, again, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like and it's, and then when you start, if you start, you know, losing a bit, and everyone's like, "Oh, you've lost it," or whatever, yeah. it's like you. No, I'm just sick of being the winner all the time. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, a little nah, bit. Yeah. It's true. So I was like, and and also coupled with that, I was uh, I had an opportunity. I spoke to Dom in the previous podcast. My first trial was with QPR. Okay. So I was I was like, right, I'm I'm sick of this, and I definitely have a trial at QPR. Mm. But by taking it, I would have to turn down contracts. Okay. So I said, fuck it this time. I was mm. like, I, I'm done. Just we just before we move on, just another question. So when you're doing all these all these good things, is there a cap on wages as well? Or is there no cap or yeah, how there's that... caps on wages, yeah. So that you can only earn a certain amount. Yeah, but um but most clubs don't even get there yet. Because okay. uh to be honest, like there's there's no real the league is still forming, the one I'm playing in. Yeah, yeah. So we've only just signed a players union agreement with the league this yeah. year. Yeah, okay. And in that one there's a salary cap, but it's like way above what any team's close to right now. Oh, okay, okay. So okay. there's still an opportunity for the league to grow for players to get paid. Okay, more got you. And me personally too, like I was Representing myself mostly, but signing one-year contracts. Mm -hmm. So they were growing quickly because yeah, yeah. of how successful that was. Okay, okay, okay. So I kind of reached like the, a good level in that league quickly. Yeah. And that's why I was like, I don't really necessarily, I mean, I'm living a comfortable life, but I always wanted to come back to Europe anyway. Okay, okay, okay. So, and the QPR, sense. they were like fifth in the championship at the time. I was like, this is just a sick experience. Yeah, of course. Was, yeah, yeah. When I went, I was with the first team and everything. Mm. So I went well, but, um, but that's basically why I, I'd had enough. I was like, no, that makes sense. Of winning it. And I'm only saying that because most people that play here want to go the opposite way. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Everyone wants to go out to America or go out to the UAE or whatnot. So it's just weird that someone like yourself that was in London went and now wants to come back. Mm. And then for someone like me, I'm looking at I'm going, no, there's nothing here. Yeah. What are you doing? Just stay where well, you are. That's, that's what but, I found. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. But obviously <laughs> when you're there, like you said, you kind of become comfortable mm -hmm. and you start to forget that I'm, I'm comfortable because I'm so good at what I do. Maybe I should enjoy what I'm doing. But at the time, it sounds like you didn't, 
not didn't appreciate, but you kind of thought, oh, this is like, it's draining. Yeah. But I'm guessing now, by the sounds of it, is that you've come here, seen what's going on and thinking, you're, it's kind of reignited you. I yeah. don't know if that's how you feel or... In a way. Yeah. Like, I definitely, for, for, the, for the ones listening, like, mm. even in my league, you, it's a very nice quality of living. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I definitely knew what I was turning away from. Like, you're kind of right, but at the same time, I also just wanted to take a risk. Of course. More, of course. Than, more than I was that sick of it. I was like... I've done all I can do mm. it. Let's see if I, I don't mind like parking it and trying to do something yeah, yeah, more. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. And also I think because I left at 19, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't necessarily get ground down by English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah you know, of I was kind of yeah. still in my head. At, I hadn't didn't know as well. Yeah, yeah, of course. Obviously I found out pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I went with yeah. like, Do you feel like a weight's been like lifted off your shoulder because of like, you've come here, you've tried it and actually thought, I'm not actually missing out on nothing here because of one, like you said, the quality of life, yeah. how people kind of speak to you in, in football. Football yeah. is a bit weird. Yeah, 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 yeah. How they judge you, do you yeah. know what I mean? You could go somewhere, you could be one of the best players, but someone else might because, I don't know, the, the manager likes him or whatever. Yeah. You quickly find out things and you think, this is mad. Yeah. Quality of life doesn't add up. What you're probably going to get paid ain't going to add up because what they see someone like yourself is, you ain't played in this league, you're that's, unproven. That's why I always was getting... But you're like, what? hold on a minute. I'm like 26, 27. I've played continuously every season and yeah. I've got awards to show what I've done. And they're still saying to you, like, oh yeah. Oh yeah, we'll don't. have a look. You yeah. can't do it here. Yeah, they're like, but can you do it here? Yeah. yeah. Like, what the, like, would you, yeah. Yeah, yeah was, you're right, bro. You're, so like, you're you feel, yeah, like you feel like a weight is lifted off your shoulders. I, I definitely, I was extremely disappointed. Of course. But, um, but yeah, like, I, as, like you said, more for myself too, mm. I can look at myself and say, I gave it a goal. 100%. And like, 100%. and I kind of knew all year long, I was called teams in this league and the USL were always calling me. Okay. So I kind of knew that that backup was there anyway, still. Um, so yeah, at least at least this way I gave it a go. I can yeah. look at myself in the mirror. No, hundred percent. I picked the absolute worst year of yeah. the century to try it. Because <laughs> to be honest, I put I was doing looking at European stuff too. Yeah, I yeah. don't necessarily care much about England. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just wanted to be closer to home. Okay, okay. So I sense. like I was I was looking at Portugal, Italy, mm. uh, hopefully Sweden as well. But like and and like third division Germany. Okay. But like literally as soon as lockdown happened, like I didn't. You just don't hear. You're like yeah, yeah. They can you can come and you come in and you just you don't hear anything. You don't hear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um so yeah. Yeah, like I definitely, I, a weight has been lifted off my shoulders, and I and I do feel, I do feel very grateful about mm. where I'm at now. <laughs> Even though I spent, bear in mind, I spent my 28th year, com didn't play. So yeah, I, like, yeah, I lost yeah. one of my prime years. Of course, yeah, yeah. And didn't even play football. Nothing. And we don't have that many years of football. No, nah, you don't. You're so right. um, so I definitely like. I sacrificed a lot, no. but I'm still in a place where I'm very comfortable with where I'm at. No, know? but it's, it's for me, it's amazing that you've done what you've done in terms of. Some people, the, the other way around, if they've got like, we always say this, just take a risk sometimes. Thanks. Like do what your mind and what your heart tells you to do, regardless of what you're losing out. So you was losing out on guaranteed money, guaranteed contracts, yeah. do you know what I mean? Guaranteed way of life. And you thought, you know what? I need to do this for me. There's a lot of people we speak about all the time that are not willing to make that jump, take that risk, mm -hmm. because then you'll never know. And you're always living in that, like I said, that weight has been lifted off your shoulder. Yeah. Now you kind of know, you know what? I gave it, I tried, you've got no regrets. Yeah. Whereas yes. some people will go throughout life, wait till they get to the end and go, oh, I should have done that five years ago. So yeah. It's too late by then. Exactly. So we like we always say, man, if you if there's anything out there you think you feel like you should do it, just go for it, man. Yeah. Just do it. And I, you've done, I, I believe you've done the right thing, man. Definitely. Honestly. Definitely. I appreciate that, man. And um, yeah, so I just wanted to say, so obviously you're talking about kind of you was in the summer training on your own. So how did it end up that you become a player for Miami FC in that summer? Well, were they always in contact with you? Yeah, so they were always one of the teams calling me. It was uh, Paul Dalglish is the is the coach. Okay, and uh, he has an old fact, he has a, a old school English way of doing things of calling me up, talking to me. He would call me like a lot, even though I, I didn't even tell him. I was like, I'm sort of interested. He's telling me who he's bringing in, the system he's playing. <laughs> Guy was hammering at me. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, all right, I've spent, a, I've lost a year of football. I'm not going to risk that again. Yeah, you know, I'm not yeah. staying here again. No, no, no. For what? Impossible. Yeah. And, or else I'm going to end up playing like, you know, running mm. like Evo stick or whatever, yeah, which yeah. is fine, which is cool. But like, no, it's not cool. It's not cool. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. No, it's not cool. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't try to be humble. It's not cool. <laughs> But there's nothing wrong with it. No, it's just I, I knew I could maybe have a yeah. slightly better quality. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. So, so I was lucky in that way. So after, so around about October or September, October of mm. that year, I was like, all right, now I need to start looking about coming back seriously. And very luckily, I had I had could pick almost. I had like five or six teams definitely interested. Mm -hmm. Um, pre like contract offers, but they mm -hmm. were all interested. Okay. And at this point I was like, okay, I've I've completed the league. Like I've proven myself. Mm. 
So I'm going to go with the most attractive money um, and also most attractive way place to live. Yeah. And luckily, <laughs> Miami somehow had pretty much both. They weren't yeah. the best contract, yeah. but easily the best place to live out yeah, of all yeah. the best contract options. Yeah, 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 I got you. I was looking at Miami or Indianapolis. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've I don't not know. heard of Indianapolis. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's why. Middle America. <laughs> that's why, bro. Middle, mid, like, Midwest. There's Middle a reason. America, oh, nothing really going so on. There's a reason you ain't heard about it, bro. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's like I don't know. I, I don't know English towns that well anymore, but it's like the Birmingham of... of no way. Of America. So it's pointless. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the Sheffield of America. Oh, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, no, Birmingham's all right. Yeah, Birmingham's all right. Sheffield. Sorry, Sheffield's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sh- yeah. 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 <laughs> they're more enough. But I'm um, not. Nah, I was like, all right, it's no question. The only issue with Miami was it's an expensive city. So yeah. I'm getting paid good, but like I was getting paid less in Louisville, but saving more money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, but I didn't give a shit about that either, man. Yeah, like, you guys, you're, you've earned it, man. You've earned it. So I just did a quick scan of my options. Didn't really take too long to start leaning towards Miami, and uh, and then we just started getting the ball rolling with contract. Yeah, yeah. So talk us through because obviously I see it on Instagram. Talk us through your visa process. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm I'm glad I just got it through. Like it yeah. went reasonably all right, considering no one could do anything mm. during this time. But it was what January this year. Yeah. Um. So it was like this. Yeah. It was. I mean, you guys will know what the situation was like. Yeah. Um, it was. I mean, I don't know how much to add to, to, to mention, yeah. but just say like, as soon as I arrived at the airport at 7 a.m., yeah. the lady at the desk said, I'm, I'm not allowed to get my flight straight away. Before, but like, no one knew any information about this before. Oh. So as soon as I showed up to the airport, she's like, yeah, you can't get on this flight because I was connecting through Germany and Germans, the German ruling at the time was, you're not, no, like, you know, Schengen? You know, Schengen yeah. is like the, the European block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mainland Europe. I didn't know that. I yeah. didn't know this word Schengen. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I thought it was Chinese or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. I swear, the lady's like, no, no Schengen. Like, if you're not Schengen, you can't transit through Germany. I was like, what the fuck is Schengen? Yeah, yeah. Like, what do you mean? Now, what is that? Do you it's know? like, it's the mainland. It's just, a, it's just it's the, the name block. of the mainland of Europe. The mainland block. Europe yeah. like, is Schen- the Schengen region. Yeah, like, because we're yeah. an island. We're not part yeah. of the Schengen region of Europe. Okay. I don't understand. So who's in, in the Schengen? So like region? France, Spain, you Italy. Know, the, oh, the, main the, block, the guys connected oh, to each other. Okay, okay, yeah. On that okay. map, the main block of <laughs> yeah, Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, yeah. this, this. Oh, okay, That's okay, Schengen. Okay, okay, I got you, I got you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so I, did, not, I had no clue. Yeah, I didn't I know I keep that. hearing this That's term, mad. Schengen. <laughs> Schengen, check but that wait, one let's out. let's just take it back just a little bit so the... So the listeners and viewers understand. So you need to get a visa yeah. to play in this league. Oh yeah, you're right. You so couldn't get the visa in London. Well, okay, so the so in January, the earliest I could get a visa appointment was like September. Yeah. Based on how you know, they were closed for so long and then had to yeah, go through the backlog of appointments. Are you are you doing that yourself or is the club supporting you with that? Thankfully the club and I have to shout out my, my main girl Vanessa Ramos who's like in, involved in like player relations, player like ops. Like she does everything basically. At a club. She, she does all the yeah, at, she's works for Miami FC. Okay. She's she's a close friend now because she just patterned everything. Okay, nice. So she's so as soon as I agreed to sign, she got in touch with me and she was she got the ball rolling with the visa and mm-hmm. stuff. Right. You just have to go online, do the bit that you need to do. Yeah, but yeah. she's like checking on everything, letting you know about everything. She booked my flights as well. Okay, nice. So um, so yeah, I had to. So because the the wait list was till September, the the best embassy to do it in the quickest one where nobody wants to go, absolutely nobody was was Poland. Like the only embassy that was half empty was a Polish embassy. You know, oh, like I can't do no Italian. Italian obviously was X at the time. Mm, it yeah. was finished. Like, yeah. All the other countries were well couldn't work with either so i had to go do this trip to poland and i was supposed to only connect take two flights connect through germany to go to poland i arrived there you know 4 p.m chill mm. so i got it also i got the visa appointment booked for the day after i fly so i arrived there and i have the visa appointment it's supposed to be a quick turnaround and uh and i get to the airport first thing they said is you're not getting on this flight because you're not schengen <laughs> and i'm like <laughs> i'm like what <laughs> bro what the mm. hell is that yeah yeah so so um, I call her up in America. It's like three a.m. I, I bailed her like eight times till she woke up because yeah, yeah. I was panicking. I yeah, was of like, course, yeah, because it takes it's a process to get a visa mm. appointment. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. It's not just the flights. It's like all right, if the visa appointment was three days away, I'll yeah. just fly tomorrow. I'll yeah. sort it out. But I was like, no, I need to get there today. So I called her up, called her up, called her up. Look, asked every other counter, all other airlines, like if they could get <laughs> me to to um, Poland, and I couldn't find anything. I was panicking, but somehow she booked me. Two other flights. Actually, no. She put me a way to get to Poland, but three planes, three flights in one day to go to Poland. Oh my Probably God. quicker to drive, honestly. Oh, my days. Um, 
And I had to go down to this secret area of the airport to do more tests to make sure I was fit to fly. You know, I had to go do like some random office space got turned into a laboratory at the yeah. time, you know, with white coats and pay. It's a, it's a racket, bro. Yeah. This testing thing for me is a racket. Yeah, you know, Like 110 a pop or used to be. I don't know how much it is now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like you got to do this one, that one. You just like 400 quid before you can fly, yeah, before bad. you buy a ticket. That's nuts. So I went downstairs, did these tests, waited another hour, two hours. Like it came through those rapid ones. I managed to get on a plane. I went from London to Paris, chilled there for an hour. Went from Paris to Amsterdam, chilled there for a few hours. And then went Amsterdam, Poland, uh, Warsaw. And I arrived there the same day, but midnight. So I got there at like 6, 7 a.m. Right. Managed to arrive to my hotel at midnight. And then after that, once I was in Poland, it was blessed. Right, okay, so okay. it was just that day of so, traveling. And the reason you couldn't go to Germany is because the German rule is that we're not taking yeah. anyone that's not from this. But you so, could go to France because yeah, they yeah, have different rules. ruling, bro. So the issue was, and this was it was it was it was carnage because the airport was half full. It wasn't that empty. It was it was less empty than I thought. But every time I was walking past someone, it was the same thing. The issue was every country made up their own rule. Right. Yeah, and these airlines aren't. In, they're not in. They're not like. They're, they're, they're private yeah. so they're not checking up on what this country needs mm. and what that country needs they're just booking flights right. you got a PCR test you're good right. so unfortunately it was the country's rules at the time right. everyone was, was doing their own so thing so I'm yeah. walking past people and so like literally everyone was going up to the desk and being and, and being like you're not, you can't get on this plane like you're, you're fucked like and they were, it, it was absolute carnage, but you, you know, you know how bad it is anywhere at airports. Yeah, 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 you yeah, can imagine right. like three, like literally no one could get on their flights or yeah. no one knew what oh, was doing. The employees didn't know what was going on. Madness. Everyone's on Google looking at, <laughs> looking at country rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it, it was, it was a mess. But once I got Poland, it was blessed. It was okay, actually cool. blessed. And you got your visa, everything sorted. Yeah. And, and honestly, I'd recommend Warsaw for people like maybe summertime, obviously, but yeah. it was quite a nice cultural mm. I've been, I've been, I've been Poland. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Warsaw was all right too. Yeah. Right? yeah it was I'll play against Warsaw. Oh yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't yeah. you remember um was you there? You might have been there last time. Probably. We played against um remember that Polish boy we had? Yeah, Philip. Yeah, don't you remember we went out to play against his team? I, I never used to go on any... I haven't been on a single trip with West Ham, bro. No way. I used to not go on trips. Yeah, but... <laughs> maybe, maybe, enough, oh, no, maybe, to be fair, it might be... Because you're the year below me. Yeah, yeah. but so then you, Sam, and there'd always be one of Cal, Cal Driver used to go, yeah, bro. Yeah, never me, bro. Yeah. China trip, you guys used to do China. Yeah, yeah, China, yeah, yeah, to be fair. No, but yeah. I think I think it was when you was... We was first years, to be fair. Because yeah. they signed him as a first year. Yeah. And apparently part of the deal that we got to go out there for three days oh, okay. and play against the team. Okay. It was nuts, bro. Yeah. It was nuts. Where? Mad stadium was crazy, rammed out, fireworks, yeah, yeah, yeah. firework display. Bro, it was like we're we're like youth team. We've taken our youth team basically is to this. this. When, did Connor go to this? To uh, was you there, Connor, when we went to Poland? Yeah. He was oh, there, yeah. Do you remember? We played against Arca Guiana. Do you remember? You felt, Bro, we felt come out, the stadium was rock was warming yeah, up and the stadium yeah, yeah, yeah. like that. Yeah, like they Bro, Arca the stadium, we was coming out for the warm up. The stadium was rammed, <laughs> rammed. Jeez, ra- and it was the, the stadium was, ro- they weren't just there watching. It was rocking. Like it was like, that. You, you're, bro, the ground shaking. <laughs> Different over there, bro. And obviously we're like, some of us are first years. There's a yeah. few other like second years, whatever. Bro, it was mad, mad you experience. Yourself. Yeah, I was nervous. I can't. <laughs> bro, the ground is rocking. <laughs> Like the bro, that's a youth is, team game, man. Is, yeah, yeah, but we're playing against their first team. Oh, okay, okay. We're not playing. No, it's not our. It's our youth team. Oh, that's their, their first, first team. team. They've obviously said to them, "We're going to bring uh, West Ham eleven yeah, as yeah. part of the contract to sign Philip." Bro, we, they've sent the youth team and sent us, man. Some of us are first years. We're like, what, bro? We've gone out there, bro. That game was a madness, bro. Yeah. I don't. Even, did we win or draw? I don't think we won. I think we drew. Definitely didn't lose. It must have been, bro. If we would have won, we would have made it out. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, impossible. But the anthem. It? We wouldn't have made it out of the stadium, bro. It was crazy. Yeah, it like, it weren't nothing racial, racial yeah. but just, it was the tense. passion, like. They're playing their first team. Yeah, yeah, yeah And yeah. for them, it's they're playing against the badge. They don't know where yeah, 17, yeah. 18, that, whatever. Man. They're seeing the badge and they're going, yeah, these men are on it. And obviously, we're warming up properly. We're coming yeah. out. We're looking like yeah, looking a squad. Good, yeah, like the business. They're right? thinking, yeah, we're playing against them. Some of yeah. Got yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's not wrong, bro. And they're thinking, yeah, we've got, bro. They, it was mad, mad experience. And then I remember going out, um, and then there was a madness on the stage. Do you remember that, Con? Bro, on the stage. Do you not- <laughs> bro, it was kicking off on the stage. What, remember fighting? No, things were doing mad stuff on the stage. We just thought they were dancing, and- but we can't see what's going on. And obviously, when you're not white yeah. and you're in Poland, yeah. you got to tread carefully. Yeah, and yeah. we're like 17, 18, Absolutely. so we're a little bit, yeah. mm, this is a bit mad. Anyway, some guys come over and he's like, 
You all right? And I'm thinking, oh, this guy's a leather jacket. <laughs> He's got the man bag. Back then, if you got the man bag, you was on smoke. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you was on smoke from back then. This is 10 years ago, bro. I'm thinking, oh, this is mad. Then he's gone. No, oh, don't worry. You're good. You're good. You're good. Whatever you want. Like, like girls, women, drinks, whatever. He's like, yeah, you lot play for West Ham. And he's like, yeah, yeah. Then the guy was nice. Isn't it? So he's like, right, cool. We're a little bit chilled. Then we're seeing something happen on the stage. Everyone's going round the stage, but we can't actually see what's going on. Right. Bro, we're going up there and two things are just doing a madness to each other. Oh. On the stage, in the middle of a club. It's just it's casual. Bro, they're going at each other, like. <laughs> but like is that, I mean, like, that's a casual thing for them. I don't know, I don't know, but we weren't in the strippers, I know that. We was in a club, like normal club, bar, music, there was an upstairs bit. And then we just see, I just see this bare people. And then we go over there and then the man, a man turns up. I said, nah, there's no way he's gonna that he's gonna start beating on, on, <laughs> on the stage. But he oh. didn't they didn't, did they? They oh, didn't. Oh, okay. No, no, they, but the two girls yeah. were going at it. Yeah. Like mad. That's how they get down over there. Bro, I, I was like, this is in the middle of a club. It's not a strippers. <laughs> and then the show's over, right, that's it. And then it's a club. Like, and then normal. everyone carries on. Yeah, people just turn around, just normal. Dancing, whatever. I was like, huh? <laughs> this is bonkers. And you're 17, 18 and Yeah, bro, seven. thinking, what? Am I even supposed to be in here? <laughs> this is mad. <laughs> is this yeah, this is mad, bro. This it's is mad. Normal. But yeah, that was a mad, yeah, mad Poland, experience. Poland, it it's a good place. No, nah, it was a nice yeah. place. I can't lie. It was nice. It was yeah. blitz, though. Mad. But it went like, um, it's like a clean country. Everything's like smooth. They weren't. I didn't. I didn't see anything mad about it. But I don't think I'd go. No, I mean, it's not one of the places you go again and again. It's like no, you've experienced back. it. I'm not yeah. going back. You wouldn't go. But back. Warsaw surprised me. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Because I'm, I'm, I'm the type of guy. I like museums. I like you of know course, old yeah. buildings. Like mm. it has a lot of that cultural stuff. Sick. As well, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a fan of that stuff. But yeah. So anyway, you go to Poland. You get your visa. Wrap it up. So then, a couple of weeks later, you're off to Miami. Yeah, basically, get home. My dad's birthday, and then I'm turn around quick, and. uh to be fair, even going to America was easy because I have the, on my passport, it has the visa, it has yeah. the reason I'm there. So I just needed negative tests and I got in and I was good. Okay. Basically. So from what I understand, Florida wasn't really too locked down no, throughout man. the pandemic or any of these nah, things. Bro. Shout so, out Governor Bashir, bro. The governor, yeah. he, he kept it open from the start the whole time and, right. t- and Texas as well. The two yeah, states yeah, were yeah. Texas and, no and Florida. Yeah. They, because America's so big, they let the governors like make Deal. their own laws for the states. Yeah. And they just said, nah, we're not doing this because Miami 100% is all about hospitality. Yeah. And so you, they need customers. They need people going to Disneyland or else they'll yeah, yeah. fold. You know, they yeah. need, they don't even, they don't even have good tax. There's no state tax in Florida. Mm-hmm. So oh, you get taxed gov- like uh, federally for the country and then you get te- tax-, tax for the state. And in Florida, there's no state tax. And oh. because of that, obviously the state doesn't have much money. Yeah. They need tourism. They yeah. need people still coming in to mm. keep that economy flowing. Whereas other states maybe can support themselves. Yeah, so I yeah. think that's why he kept it open. Mm. But I don't care. Either way, it was free. It's normal bro. for you. Yeah, bro, yeah, I got there. You don't see you don't see any masks. Nothing. It's just normal. See, it's free there, bro. That's I, did, I, didn't, I, I forgot. About, I almost forgot it existed until I came back here, bro, honestly. <laughs> and so there's no no one's dropping down like flies. Bro, and that's what they would tell us. That, you know, if bro, you know, maybe in the beginning they were trying to like do it. But if you check the numbers, Florida has one of the lowest numbers right now of mm. infection rates. Mm. Like, or at least throughout the year, like they weren't, wor- they weren't worse than anyone yeah. else. Exactly. So like, I don't know, man. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not a mathematician. I, yeah, don't, yeah, I don't really yeah. look at graphs that much, but yeah, yeah, yeah. like, it's fine. No, yeah. they weren't, they weren't, basically, I didn't know anyone who got, who suffered negatively this year okay. from COVID. Yeah. So when you, when you get, when you get there, obviously you've been speaking to the manager. Yeah. Do you know what you're getting yourself into? Like Absolutely. as in, so do you know if the, if the managers like managed before? Do you know some of the players? Do you know the squad? Oh, the team? in that sense, a little bit in that sense. Yeah. Like I do know a bit of Paul's history. Okay. And I do know uh I do know that um I do know that uh he was asking me to bring players in because I knew the league well and my team was successful. So I was able to bring two of my former teammates in with me. Oh, is it? Who yeah. I won oh, with. sick. So he was kind of leaning on me a bit to help him. Okay. But he, he's one of, like, I don't want to speak too much ill of him, but he's one of those coaches who kind of leans on you, but it's a one-way transaction type thing. Like You got to help him, but he's not really yeah. going out of his way to help you. Well, well he probably he, thinks he's helping you, but like, he's a, he was a bit... Oblivious. Yeah, he's a bit delusional. Mm. <laughs> so, you, so, so you wouldn't play for him again? <laughs> Why are you asking me that? I'm just asking, if your phone rang now... All right, look, um, I, I, me and him, like... We've, I, I we've know been through it a lot. Yeah. yeah, we've been through a lot this year together. Yeah, and I, I was professional, um, but I'm yeah, I wouldn't play from ever again. Fair enough. Fair, Fair enough. enough. You got to, it's, you know, it happens. These things are not personal. Yeah. Yeah. you know that. It just wasn't my style of coaching. Yeah, yeah, of course. And like the the biggest thing for players is is how how a manager or a coach 
deals with players mainly. I don't think it's so much like people don't understand that some some players think it's all about tactics and yeah. what does he know, where has he played. Sometimes it's just about being a good person. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And players give more for good people than good tacticians. One million like, percent. Do you know what I mean? If like that's what some players forget or some managers even forget that if you're a good person a manager will a player will give you extra without you knowing Bro. knowing that you mean well you might not have an idea about football or nothing you might not have like you're not the best you're not the greatest tactically you don't really understand the game you don't know how to run things but if you if you mean well and you're trying players will give you more yes. but some 100%. some people don't get that man it's it's mad isn't it it's, it's, it, it seems simple but i do also think it's the hardest part of being a manager yeah 100% because because also like we all have our personalities and some people are just better at relating or mm. speaking on the same level as someone than yeah. others, you know? Mm. And uh, in his case, he, he has a, a huge knowledge of the game. He's, mm. he's obsessed with it. He knows really good tactics. When he broke it, one of the reasons I went with him is because of the style he wanted us to play sounded amazing to me and I was really excited about it. Yeah. And then uh, obviously, as soon as we get there, um, it was a totally different story. Bro. Oh my god! <laughs> it was a totally man. different story in, in many ways. Like obviously, um, like COVID was having a big issue for us because we needed to test every week, uh, just like weekly, just in general. Thing, yeah, yeah. And at that time, at the, early on, Miami kind of it was popping off. But the way I understand like uh, viruses and, and immune systems is obviously if you get it, you, everyone's going to get it quickly and then after a while it settles down. Mm. So the issue wasn't like health reasons, the issue was just testing negative. Yeah, yeah. So we had a lot of positive tests early on which made us stop training, which disrupted stuff. So yeah. to be fair, it wasn't just him. Okay. But there was so many, he didn't, he, he was like you said, like he couldn't give players who weren't starting a reason why they weren't, a good enough reason. Mm. He couldn't give players who were struggling to understand what was going a different way of understanding it so that they could do better. Yeah. Like he, it was that part, the communication mm. one-to-one okay. talking to a player, which unfortunately um, didn't go well for yeah. us. And like you said, that's not an easy thing for it's any man. It's, it's hard not, because you've man. got all these players and you can't cater for every single no. player. So somewhere along the line, it is, it is going to break down, which, yeah. which I totally get. I'm sure there's players that have played for him and thought, wow, like I'll play for him again. Yeah, it's some just, people like because, him yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah, of course. That's, it's, just, it's just football. Yeah. And some managers and players think it's personal when a manager yeah. says like, yeah, you're not for me. It's yeah. not personal. Yeah, it's it's not just, personal. you're not, you're not, you're not, not what, yeah, you're not, you're not the type of player, whatever it may be, but it's not, it's not personal, like no. you said, do you know what I mean? So. But so it was a bit, it, yeah, he had other things about him too, though, his mm. personality, which were rubbed people, like even his staff members the wrong way. Oh, okay, so, okay, okay. So it was, uh, it kind of, it was even more than players too. It was kind of the whole club was on the same boat page and then he was a little bit dysfunctional. He was the only dysfunctional mm. piece. Really. Okay, 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 okay. Um, kind of without realising it, but making it 10 times harder for us. You know? Okay. So, right, right, right. So, so how do you compare like how this season has gone slash the league to like pre-COVID? Like did you, did you feel like there was a change at all? standing better worse the scheduling stuff because it was like a bit more localized right because of covid mm -hmm. and stuff like that like how do you find the experience in comparison to like pre-covid um i really i hated it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i hated it because uh like you said we split up into smaller conferences um just to reduce the amount of travel mm -hmm. so we play every team four times oh four times yeah. and you're supposed to take that seriously yeah. oh my god and you play two away games two home games yeah. and like you know, after the third game, you're like, you like know each other. Oh, you know what I mean, like, like you're, you know, you're, you're playing the team that like you smack three times, and maybe at the end you drop points because yeah. you're like sick of smacking. We're well, not yeah, sick yeah, of it, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. you're just not motivated yeah, or something, hard. or they're pissed and they want to come out yeah. hard. You know, so it was a different challenge, but I really didn't enjoy it. Mm. Um, and then also testing, like constantly testing to make sure, like that disrupted things too. So it yeah. was, it was a really, uh, really like disrupted season and mm -hmm. not ideal. Man. Thankfully, next season, no, we're going back to just two conferences, East and West. Okay. Um, and I'm, I don't know about the testing situation, but most people are vaccinated anyway. So mm. Cool, cool, cool. That cool. really does anything. So now let's talk about the, the like, not that this hasn't been interesting, but the more interesting, what, yeah, is, bro, what, is, living it, bro. In, what is living in Miami <laughs> like? I'm not going to speak on this. Obviously, as, <laughs> as someone from, like, born and raised kind of in London, has lived in a few places in America yourself, has been out in America for a yeah, while. Yeah. Obviously, I'm going to visit you in Feb. Yes. So I'll be able to attend. Visit or move in with me. <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing. You don't realise it yet. But... Um, so you'll be able to, I'll be able to attest to what, to what you're about to say. But yeah, just talk to us through, like, what's Miami like? Had you been 
to Miami at all before you moved to live there? No, actually, I hadn't been to Miami properly, but mm. I've been Florida a lot. Right, and okay. Florida, like, unfortunately, the state of Florida is actually really dead. It's terrible. Is it? <laughs> it's a, it's a hot, because because they purely because they don't have state tax and other reasons, and they have crazy laws. It's not a nice place to live in terms of outside of the city. Oh, it's the dead state, very much. Mm. Um, there's Universal and Disneyland, obviously. Yeah, 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 yeah. you gotta go. But <laughs> but I <laughs> go to Miami. Been, I'm guessing you've been not this year, but I've been before as a kid and stuff. Yeah, yeah. but um, Disneyland. Yeah. <laughs> Have you been? No, no, been Universal's bro. the one though. I like films, so. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. yeah, like you know, like Terminator. So you see, like these, Park, yeah, but you see these like Disneyland. It's a kiddie thing, isn't it? Yeah. You no, can. but you can go. Yeah, yeah. As an adult, and you enjoy it. So just go no, as friends. No, yeah. no. What I'm asking, like, how old? Kids will just enjoy it throughout whatever age. It's not like for five year olds or fifteen. No, it's for everyone. But you enjoy it as well as an adult. No, I know I would. I'm a kid. Yeah, yeah, it's for all ages. It's sick. Yeah, yeah. it's actually sick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I I prefer Universal though. Is it? Yeah. Are they close to each other? Yeah, yeah, very close. You can do both. Oh, but Miami. Let me give it to Miami, bro. (laughs) Miami. As soon as I went to Miami, I was like, this is this is a whole different world. Like I've, like you said, I've spent eight years in America. I've mm-hmm. moved mostly around the east side of America, up and down. Mm. Um, and the one thing that stood out to me the most immediately was most American cities, it's very clear that they're still obviously segregated, like clearly segregated, even though they're not, you know? Mm-hmm. And so this is like the white area. This is the, the black African-American area. This is the Latino area, like, like underprivileged is over here, mm. and rich people over here. But in Miami, like you still have, you have a sickening amount of like wealth to, the wealth gap is sickening. Yeah, yeah. But at the very least, you have so many cultures that have blended each other. So oh, like okay. it's an abs, it is a melting pot. There is still very like poor. Hey, I like that one, melting pot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. That's, a, <laughs> right, that's a good one. It's a melting <laughs> pot. Can you I like that one. Yeah, you yeah. Read that one down. That one's, ooh. Mental note. It's so, a melting pot. <laughs> and so like, obviously like, yeah. As you can tell, like growing around America, like I, I get, you know, not funny looks, but you know, I look, I stand out. I look yeah, weird. Yeah, yeah. You go Miami because everyone's so mixed. You are, like, I fit right in immediately. Mm. Like people, it's not like they look like me, but everyone's used to seeing Different. combinations mm. and variations. And also Miami is the only place where usually the, the main bulk of Latin culture is Mexican in America. Mm. But Miami has literally all of Central South America. And I'm talking all of it. So I'm talking like Mexico, Cuba, the Caribbean, all of the Caribbean, yeah. uh, Brazil, Ecuador, Bolivia, Sounds Peru, like Argentina, heaven. Venezuela, yeah. like, and when they're all mixing together, yeah. just think about the ladies, bro. Yeah. Just think about the things <laughs> that you're gonna get, bro. Like, like, just think, man. So, so um, I get there, immediately feel super comfortable. Yeah. Everyone's really social because yeah. of the Latin cultures that have, are, are dominate. Mm. Yeah. And Latin is, is very like people, social, community. Yeah, 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 community, community yeah, yeah. Deep down, Latin culture is rich, you know, it, yeah. has, it has culture. Mm. And so there's that element too, and which you don't necessarily get in other countries. Yeah. And my favorite part is Spanish is the main language. So sometimes you don't even feel like you're in America. Oh, okay. You're in yeah, certain yeah. parts and, and you're like, I'm in a, a tropical country, you know? mm. I'm in a different place. Have you yeah. learned any Spanish? Poquito. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm thankfully my mom's Italian, so I'm fluent in Italian. Yeah, yeah. So I understand Spanish very well. Yeah, and then I speak, very close, I speak av- like bang av, like just. But you can, av- you can, when they talk to you, you can understand. Yeah, most oh, like yeah, yeah. 80%. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. Um, and then I do my best to like say a few words and point, you know, yeah, and, it, yeah. and it comes off. Right. Okay. okay, cool. But, um, but yeah, as soon as I got there, it was, it was basically the first time in America that I f- considered st- I could stay there. Easy. Really, yeah. that's a big statement, you know. For okay. someone that's been at eight years, yeah. you've now basically saying this is home. Well, not I'm home, potentially. But you know, yeah, yeah, you know, you know what I mean. Yeah, like yeah, this yeah. is the one place I can actually live here, not the rest of my life, but for the next few years comfortably. Whereas Easy. the other places, you was a little bit, you know. So the perception I feel like of Miami, though, and yeah. obviously you're going to tell us different now. But the perception is, you know, party, 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 yeah. holiday destination, live it up, loads of money, like fast money, all this stuff. Obviously, I know that you're not necessarily someone who subscribes to that. Yeah. So what is it about Miami that draws you to it? Um, I think kind of the points I made yeah. too, like the, the, the Latin, the rich Latin culture is the yeah. main dominant theme there. Right. Mm. Okay. And, um, and so absolutely, it's, a, it's the one of the most superficial. It's like Vegas. Like you go there to spend your money, to mm. party and then leave right. on, the, on the superficial level. Yeah. yeah. And they do that better than anyone. So if you enjoy that, you're good. Yeah. But um, the reason they do that better than anyone is because they have so much 
like energy behind it and the energy behind it is the latin culture right, okay. but with the latin culture you get good family morals you get people most people raised well yeah yeah, yeah. you get like like e- ethics you know you you have a and also they, they love partying they love even not partying like spending money doing stupid shit yeah. but house parties or yeah. barbecue parties yeah, or yeah everything is a celebration like i lived in central miami and i, I swear to god i didn't stop hearing reggaeton the whole time I was there. <laughs> like, you just hit mm, ch- mm, ch- yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> somewhere next door, next, outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I lived, on, I lived on a river that goes out to the bay. Mm. And so Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, oh, religiously, true. boats are just going past nonstop with ladies in bikinis, dancing, mm. waving, yeah, yeah, just yeah. banging music. Yeah, yeah, Cars yeah. are like flashy. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they do it in a way that it's not like I'm better than you yeah it's like i'm celebrating i'm, I'm like yeah. you know, i'm gonna get Come a g-wagon yeah. and i'm gonna wrap it in bubblegum pink camo yeah. print yeah. the fattest rims and the biggest sound system because i'm just trying to celebrate yeah. right? not because i'm like i'm better than you you yeah. know no, yeah, yeah. so like they do it but they do it in a way that's inclusive and like if you want to dye your hair or if you wear a funny piece of clothing they love that you yeah, know they, yeah. they they welcome you so yeah, 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 so yeah. they have a underneath the superficial side they do it in a way that's inclusive you know yeah, rather okay. than being like we're better than you, you know? obviously you've got the guys flexing you've got the that's people who want to prove to you know yeah, they, yeah. you know they're like i'm a little bit richer than you yeah but as a whole like it's inclusive yeah, that's so that's sick. why i like it that's you say it's more diverse than london no, no. no, London's one of the most diverse places in the world. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I this is the pot. We the should, melting this pot. is like New York is yeah, like yeah, London. Yeah. But I think London's more diverse than New York. But I would have to, we'd have to search it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The diversity in Miami comes from Latin cultures. <laughs> right, okay. So it's Latin speaking is the most mixed up Latin I've ever seen because each country has so much rich culture that's individual, right. but so many of them are in Miami that they all blend. So right. it's the most l- diverse Latin mixture I've ever seen. And you must have some amazing Latin food as well in Miami. Yeah, yeah, yeah all yeah. of it, bro. Like Cuban, Colombian, Peruvian is kind of the top because Peru like to fuse with Japan and J- Japanese cuisine is some of my favorite. Right. Yeah. So they do like ceviche, yeah. then like sushi ceviche, like they blend it. Okay. So um, Peruvian is kind of on top, but yeah, you have so much Latin cuisine, bro. It's all That's like it. planting and, and rice and mm. beans and good grilled and sorted meats, you know, like, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. how it is. Caribbean food is very similar. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It's very similar to Jamaican food. So is there anything that you dislike about Miami? Or like anything that's a negative. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> like, there's a huge portion of women that are just unaccessible, bro. Like, right. like I've never seen such a, a, a high frequency of very, very attractive women. Okay. All the time. Okay. Like, my first week, I had to go see a chiropractor because my neck was done. <laughs> my neck was finished. I'm, I'm like, I'm driving. I swear, I don't know how I didn't crash my car at least eight times in the first week. But then once you, once you get used to it, which yeah. is a dangerous thing, yeah. Like, or there's so like you don't there's two women there's a mother and daughter walking down the road you don't know which one's the mum or the daughter oh my god you don't you haven't you, you can tell you know yeah. but the mum looks like a sister yeah, 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 yeah it's like it don't make sense so that's mad so i think the one of the things that pisses me off the most is, is just walking past these women knowing i can't access them because <laughs> <laughs> i'm not on six feet smiling but you're angry inside <laughs> i'm looking at them i'm just like they walk past i'm like damn yeah, yeah, yeah someone, one. someone else is putting that one on the yacht <laughs> tonight. Like, I'm going straight to the table at the club yeah, tonight. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You know, you know what I wanted to ask you? So obviously we know about America and Miami, about being at like a party. When you go out there, you really got to spend. And yeah. you know, in the big clubs, people really go and spend the strip clubs. People really go like go go hard in spending the money. But don't crime also come with that? Yeah. And what is the crime like? Okay, Have you yeah. noticed anything or is it is it safe to go out in America? Or in Miami, should I say? I mean, because depends that's what comes with depends it. Who so, you are. in my experience, yeah. like if you've been raised in a major city and you have street smarts, you're good everywhere. Mm. So, I think if you know how to look after yourself in London, mm. you might find yourself in a bad situation, but very infrequent. You know what you're doing. Yeah. So, for the most part, it's safe. The only issue is like everyone's strapped in in, in America. Everyone has guns. No way. Like it's yeah. casual. It's normal. Everybody has guns. Like even grandmas who have one in a glove box of their car. In America, yeah. so it's you when you one? find trouble, nah, nah. You never, you ever thought about it? No, I've just, I've practiced shooting them though, but like I don't. Own but you, no, I know, but you've never thought about. No, bro, my one of my boys came over before I left. I hadn't seen him in ages. Why are you so against it? If that's the normal thing over there, I'm not against it. It's just you man, sound like you're against it. <laughs> no, I'm against owning. I'm against owning one. I want to know how to use one. No, I know, but I'm saying, why are you so against owning one? If because, it's the normal, it sounds like everyone like Air Force. Everyone's got Air Force. It sounds like guns. Are just like, <laughs> I don't I don't care. Care. It's true. <laughs> that's what you're saying. Don't 
carry a knife around either. No, no, a knife is different though, isn't it? Don't you have a license to hold a gun? Though? You need a license, yeah. yeah but so I'm you guessing have... most people have a license. Most of the time, That's yeah. what I'm saying. So if it's the norm and you're living in a, a mad place, would you not think, you know what, maybe I need to invest in one? Yeah, that's a good question, yeah. honestly. And, well, it's a good point, actually. And, uh, mm. and like, yes, but I'm a real, I'm, I'm, I, I love. I'm a lover. Like a I, hundred I, percent. Mm. I've never even. St- I've never started a fight. In my yeah, life. yeah, of course. Yeah. I've been in fights. I've defended mm. myself before. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But it's the ultimate last option. You know? mm. So, I like to think I don't. I think if I have one, I'm gonna be more inclined to be okay to use it. You know. Okay. Like okay. if I have one, I don't even want to have the option of having. Yeah, one. yeah, I get that. I get Until that. obviously, if someone's trying to kill me and I have a gun, I'll shoot. <laughs> yeah, him, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Of or at least I'll try and cap him. You know, yeah, I don't yeah, want to yeah. kill him by <laughs> knees or something. <laughs> like, I don't know if I'm a good enough yeah, shot, yeah. but I'll make him dance. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, no, I get that. But it is a very normal thing. So when you do find yourself in sketchy trouble, it's much worse in America. It's just if you know what you're doing, you still won't find it. Yeah. But in Miami, you're right. Like I have a friend of mine who was robbed at gunpoint because. He's he has my, he's a rich friend. Yeah, he had, he had a he has a sick Mercedes. He has a he had a he had an Audemars Ar- Pigeot watch, mm. and he was out the club. Literally, when walk into his car out the club, two guys robbed him at gunpoint and took his watch. And like, mm. luckily he kept his car, but he took his watch. Done. Mm. So, it is extremely sketchy in America. Would you say that the the crime is? For the big spenders, they need to be careful. Yeah, but like someone exactly. that's just going out on a normal night out, probably you're hanging fine. out. Yeah, you're, you're fine, gonna have bro. a good time, gonna have a great time. But right, if amazing. you're in the club and you're, yeah, if you make it, you're obvious, doing you're that. Yeah, for yeah. It, you got you, you got to be done. careful. But okay. if you're just a chill citizen, just enjoying life. I've I've had eight years. I've seen guns. I've I've heard gunshots. Like yeah. I've seen really dodgy stuff, but only around me. I've no one's ever had a problem. But yeah, with yeah. My whole, because my you're going out to enjoy life and not trying to. Pretend you're someone, yeah. yeah. And it's the vibes as mm. well. But that's what I was going to say. Is it the vibe? Because I feel like that stuff happens in London. If that's someone's in a club just doing way too much, acting like they're a guy, after some haters gonna someone's going to just make a page. Oh, yeah, this guy, when he comes out, make sure you. Yeah. yeah. But if you're just going on a love thing and just showing everyone love, yeah. just enjoying yourself, you're not really doing too much. Mm. Usually you're fine. Yeah. So it's the energy you bring around. Yeah. That yeah. You can tell, innit? Yeah. yeah. But, but yeah, Miami, like, does get super like, sketchy really quick, too. Like, oh, another, another not good thing. But it, even like the rich and poor areas are way more intermixed. It's like nice area, bad neighbor area, nice area, bad name area. Oh, okay. Whereas okay. like kind of like London, you know. Whereas yeah. in America, usually it's segregated, but yeah. it's like this whole area is good. Yeah, this whole totally area you'll sh- never be in. Yeah. 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 Whereas yeah. in Miami, it is a bit more intermixed. The only things I don't like about Miami is obviously, um, like like you say, it can get sketchy quick. But then also there's a huge problem with homelessness, which isn't. I don't mind like homeless people like if they choose to it and to do it and it, like and it's their own thing that's cool. But obviously the city isn't really dealing with it well or, oh, okay, okay. or like making sure. Isn't that a big thing in America just in general yeah. anyway? Yeah, like, like you go through areas and it's just like it looks like a campsite. Yeah, loads of tents. Yeah, yeah. campsites. That's mad. Which is crazy. So yeah. I'd like obviously uh, I'd prefer them to like help them or sort out. Yeah, 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 of course. I don't know what you can do. I mean, no, I'm not yeah. like a city planner or anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, but there's that issue too. When you go there, you'll see immense poverty right next to immense wealth. You know, which, oh. is, which is a shame. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. mad. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> that's mad. It is. <laughs> it is so, mad. is it more like the centre of Miami, like in the centre of the city, the yeah. homelessness, or is it kind yeah. of spread out? No, no, it's pretty concentrated. Right. It's on the centre. It's on the beach, right. obviously. Like, yeah, yeah. If I'm homeless. I'm going straight to the beach. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. There's public toilets there as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, once you go out to the nice neighbourhoods, you don't see it anymore. Mm. But it's just I lived right in the centre. Right, right. Which was like it's called Brickle. It's the financial district. Okay, yeah, yeah. And it's like it's it's like the most central area for everywhere, and it's the most popping area as well. It's like a lot right. of the like fi- like business people live there, finance people live there, and work there. And right. It's a decent area. So did did that accommodation get sorted by the club? And like, do you live with other players? Do you live in like a complex with other players? No, actually, you um, just sorted it yourself. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They got in con- got in contact with the real estate. So most clubs, most this is why quality of life's good there. You can save money in America. Most teams give you free housing. Oh, is it? And it's usually all right. It's, it's not amazing, but it's yeah. usually good enough. You know, okay. so in Louisville, I was not paying any rent. Right. But in Miami, they didn't provide that. Um, and because of the pandemic and everyone working remotely, loads of LA and New York people moved to Miami, Miami last year. Mm. And because of that, like prices have gone stupid. The, the prices have, have skyrocketed. So um, they give you a, the, the club won't provide it, you know. So they they give you a real estate agent and she just shows you a bunch of stuff. And right. I had my own studio to myself. Okay. Um, in uh, in like, for me, I think like the best location in terms of just getting to know the city and mm. finding your feet. 
I was just central, central. Like if you think of central, like Soho, basically. Yeah, uh, okay. like Shoreditch or Soho. Oh, okay, 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 nice. Basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was living there and I was paying a lot of rent. Right. <laughs> like paying 2100 for a studio a month. <laughs> yeah, that's mad. Wow. So like, obviously, I didn't save much money this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think I wasn't even chasing women. Yeah, uh, imagine. So are you have you moved to somewhere else now, or are you going to move? I'm to looking. Somewhere? I'm oh, looking, and looking. I'm definitely rooming with some teammates. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm absolutely rooming with teammates. So I'm still gonna be in a good area. Yeah, yeah. But like, it's gonna take a massive chunk off my my rent. Bill. Yeah, of course, yeah. of course. We just have a one roommate or two roommates. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. if you get a three bed, it's like a it's a big space anyway. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, we yeah. can like. You know, one thing about having a studio, I couldn't bring like people over often. Yeah, because my bed's still there. Everything's yeah, kind of yeah. tight. Yeah, yeah. But if you have a three bed, like after party, it's straight hours. You know, like, yeah. if we're still central. <laughs> it's like once we're done party, yeah, come straight back to us. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, kind of yeah, what I'm looking sick. for. Right, right, right. Um, so, are you looking forward to next season then? Bro, I can't wait. My can't oh, bro, wait. I ain't seen the sun yet, bro. I was yeah. telling him already. Yeah, I, I come not. home, I don't know what the sun looks like anymore. <laughs> it's been three days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even know what the sun looks like anymore. Quality of life, that. I yeah. swear to God, I come home. You're in I'm the like, jungle now, you know that. Bro, I swear, I came home. Yeah. I'm like, why is everyone pissed at me? Have I got something yeah. in my face? Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah, they live in England. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> these guys are just miserable, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, and like, yeah. And I'm not being funny, like some of the people, like obviously the less melanated mm. people, yeah. they look like they're living in caves or yeah, something. Yeah. <laughs> they miss, they just, it looks yeah, terrible, they're bro. <laughs> I, like, I forgot, I've been a whole year of just fresh, young, Latina sun, every, yeah, yeah, sun yeah. every just day. Just enjoying. Yeah. I was yeah. on the beach the day before I flew, man. Oh, man. How do you find as well, like, I was doing like some research, because obviously I'm thinking about maybe making my way back to the US next year and bro. stuff. That like everyone's very health conscious in Miami. I was reading like everyone's into their fitness. Everyone works out and stuff. And obviously that's not the case here in London. But like, did did you notice that that everyone's kind of on fitness, going to the gym, working out and that? Yeah, one million percent. Yeah. And 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 you know, you see the reasons why. Like majority of the reasons are superficial. Yeah. Because they need to keep up with the other girls who look better than them. Yeah. yeah. And getting the better benefits. What about know? the guys? The guys. 50 50 you still yeah. get like you know like if you're making money you're, you it doesn't know. matter doesn't but yeah definitely overall there is a definite fitness uh, <laughs> idea and yeah. and uh culture do you think it's maybe because of the climate so people are wearing less clothes one million percent so are less or more conscious yeah. and so want to work out bro, you're you, always going to be on the beach you don't want to be looking good. crazy Ooh, yeah. bro, you, you, all you see is legs and waist yeah. and arms and, and everything like yeah. like a girl would be wearing a bikini is like standard dress in miami so if you're wearing bikini like 80% of the time, you have to come correct. Yeah, you got to come. Right. Otherwise, yeah. The pressure's there, bro. That's what I'm saying. And then if they're not looking correct, you just go find another one. <laughs> <laughs> so that part's messed. Yeah. But yeah, the weather too. Like yeah, yeah. when the sun's out, you feel happy. When you can work out outside, you feel happy. Mm. When you go to the beach, like Muscle Beach is, is obviously an outdoor gym mm. on the beach. Yeah, yeah, go yeah. there, like it's the best feeling ever to work out in the sunshine, jump in the ocean afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. So there's the superficial reasons, but then also spiritually, like, it, you know, when the sun's out, you feel- You well, feel, yeah, you, yeah, you, you know, feel you, better. Which I understand, like here, like, bro, three days in, I can, I'm like, I how long, you, how, long you, how, how long are you here for? Just a month. Just a month. It's gonna be a long one. <laughs> bro, it's been three days, bro. <laughs> I'm three days, I'm just, I'm looking at my pictures three days, already. Three days and you're complaining? It's going to be a long one. Oh. It's going to be a long one. I know. It's going to be a long I'm one. We have to hold on, man. Yeah. I'm dead, I'm dead. Might so, go with some beds, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, football-wise, are you looking forward to next season? Like, do you think you'll do better than yeah. you did in the previous season? Um, I, yeah, I, I, obviously, optimistically, yeah, always. I always want to do better. I think, considering how it went, talent-wise, we should have performed better, but considering the situations and, and, and the leadership we had, uh, we we kept it together. We could have folded. Like like just a touch on Paul again. Yeah. Historically, he's had locker rooms mutiny on him and get him fired by going to the owner. So he's lost locker rooms fully before. Right. We were very professional with it and we're like, I'm not I'm not fucking this up for myself, you yeah. know. So we held it together. So now we had we went from King Kenny's son to uh to another famous son, which yeah. is Anthony Poulis's son, yeah. Tony Poulis. Yeah, so yeah. he's the same name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but as soon as I met with him, he was straight on. He was like, I've got the preseason plan already done. No. We've, I'm bringing in all my staff. We're going to do everything as professional as possible. We're changing training. Paul had us training in the evenings because of some bullshit scientific reason he was thinking of. <laughs> Bro, he, he was like, because you play in the evenings, your body needs to get used to training. Like, it gets used yeah. to exerting itself at that time of the day. But every everyone trains in the morning. Mm. You know, or maybe... Like often, like yeah, eleven yeah. or twelve, yeah. You know, yeah, you want to train at your peak, innit? Yeah. So Poulos comes in, like he's like, no, nah, we're doing morning trainings, we're doing this, we're doing that, we're getting meals sorted. We like he's fixing, saying he's gonna fix everything up, saying he's gonna be straight 
transparent with the players all the time. And like, and I've met with him and, and I have high expectations too, but I was felt good about how the conversation Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, so of course. That coupled with uh, what I believe is a very strong locker room, mm. I, I my ambition is to win the whole thing again. Yeah. And, uh, and in, in terms of signings, obviously you mentioned uh, before that, it's 18 new players that came yeah, in. Yeah, exactly. That too, last year. So would you keep the same? Can you get rid of players? How does it work? If you're locked into a contract, can you get rid of players? Do they stay? Does a new manager bring his own? So What's the situation now? Because I'm guessing most of them have signed two-year contracts, yeah, which yeah. is a standard standard thing over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, usually it's a one and a one option or yeah. two years. Yeah. Um, and uh, thankfully, like, the core group of guys, like, well, at least 16, 17 guys are staying. Okay. And we all, we developed a good culture amongst us, you know, okay, despite okay. Uh, the coach, we were like good with each other, we yeah, were yeah. tight. So we're all staying and we've only, we're only going to add three or four more guys. Okay. Yeah. So, th so the, the manager's happy with the squad that he's got. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? I believe so. He's, he's excited. Keeping, if he's keeping 16, 17, that's mm -hmm. a big statement. Normally managers come in and there's going to be, you only keep six or seven, yeah. really. Yeah, really. And then you add 10 more of your own because you want to do things your way. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that, that shows a lot to you guys sticking together and making it happen. Mm -hmm. sure. So that's, nah, that's he, amazing. He told me too that he's excited with the locker room. So yeah. he likes, and he knew everyone's traits already. He was, he's patterned this guy. Like he, oh, okay, okay. He knew so about he knows everyone. the players, he knows the league. Yeah, he's, scout, he's actually like, he actually does his due diligence. Mm. So that's why I'm encouraged by him. And also most of the decisions were done by the GM, the president, so the guy above him. Um, in terms of contracts and who to keep and who to add. Even like the, a striker we signed wasn't even Pulis's decision. So I don't really, I'm not too sure how the dynamic works, but in America, obviously, a lot of times the signings might not even be the coach. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, and so our GM, who's a really patterned guy as well, um, funnily enough, our owner is an Italian billionaire who got rich off. He was the one who started Inter Milan TV for internationally. Okay. So he was sorting out Inter Milan TV in all the countries. So mm. he's a billionaire of that. Mad. Had this guy, this guy was the GM of Inter Milan. So he's doing this job by Inter before. Oh, wow. And okay. then comes to join Miami FC. <laughs> but he's an American guy. Yeah, so maybe he wants to come back and like revolutionize yeah, the industry yeah, yeah, yeah. as well. But bro, the growth in America is going to keep going. It's mm. frightening. Definitely. So I think he wants to do that too. But right. he's very good at his job. Right. So he's kind of looking at things and making sure things go well too. So he's more involved in the signings as well. Sick, man. But yeah, but... Yeah. Send me his number. Bro, he's a <laughs> sick guy, man. Bro, you're interested, yeah. huh? The yeah. only problem is I've tried to help other guys out too. He's sticky with the internationals yeah, because yeah, yeah. we had to pay for an extra one ourselves. I think in the USL, you're allowed eight or nine. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And we had to buy an extra one. And oh, so we that? released that guy. And so now we're on level again. Oh, okay, so okay, he, he's okay. sticky with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fair I'm, enough. I've always, I'm always trying to help my... my yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> Not me, bro. I'm, I'm stuck. You're stuck. I'm stuck. <laughs> I'm no, stuck. just for now, bro. It's, yeah. te it's temporary, man. Yeah, yeah. It's so, um, what sh do you still have aspirations of like trying to play in the MLS and these things, or have you kind of let that go because you think it's so difficult with the whole green card situation? I've, uh, I've let it go in terms of like actually emotionally pulling me around. Mm. So emotionally, I've let go of it. But obviously, it's in the back I, of your mind. I've, the way I'm looking after myself, like I told you before, I, I plan on playing for at least six to eight more years, you know, depending, like God willing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'll never give up, man. I'll keep, if I keep winning my league, it's this year I was in the, the, the team 11 again, yeah. the, the team of the year. Yeah. So if I keep like proving to everyone I'm, I'm good. I don't see why at some point maybe something could open up somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll, I always want to try and go higher and higher, but until then I'll just take care of the business. And yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. And then be grateful, you know. Sick, man. Basically. And do you, see, and you, do you see yourself in Miami beyond <laughs> next season? I know, obviously you're saying you're loving it at the uh, moment. I don't oh know. Oh my God, bro. We should go back on to how good Miami is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that, I think that's what the viewers want to hear. Yeah. <laughs> I, think that's what I mean, I'm going to be there so we can, bro. I can attest. Yeah, we'll do, it, we can do a, a live quick pod. little yeah. one there, bro. You, you can do a live pod on the beach. Yeah, yeah a little man, instead man. of Connor in, uh, in wherever he was, bro. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, man, you can do it. I just, yeah. just take the camera and just record what you see. Bro, please. Record what don't, do, don't even speak. You, just you, won't have enough, you won't have enough footage. Like, yeah. Let me just give you one example. There's yeah. a lot of bridges going over this river but. and they go up and down because every man's moving their yacht through. But. And when it goes up, you're chilling there, you're in traffic. When it goes up, more often than not, when it goes up, I've been sat in my car, four cars away from the front, mm -hmm. doors open, music gets turned up and girls just start twerking for five minutes just in the street. In the what, they the come street. out of the car? They're just, they've got <laughs> but minutes to kill. They just start dancing for the other cars and like, and then the, some other cars get their cameras out. And as soon as the camera's out, they do more. Look they're just, guys smiling. Bro, I'm telling you, they're just, and then every corner you go, someone's shooting some dead music video with some bang-ab whip and two 
decent birds are just twerking all over. <laughs> it, it's it's twenty four seven a party in Miami. It's non stop, bro. It's non stop. Obviously, you've got like um yeah, I'm not space me. space Miami and uh, eleven. Right. They're they're twenty four hour clubs too. So you go space till till like twelve midday the next day. You're, you're in the club. You go there maybe four a.m. till seven a.m. or eight a.m. or ten a.m. You know that's where you, like. It's non-stop in Miami, it's non- But could it be somewhere, because obviously I'm moving, because I would wanna, I wanna be working there, obviously, and then enjoying yeah, the Yeah, you're play. not going to do any work. I'm not going to do any work. <laughs> no, nah, I'm joking, you will, you will. Because you work remotely, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's not like nine to five. No, nah, I can, yeah, I can, it's, it's quite flexible. Exactly, yeah. no, you, like, that's the that's the other side. Like, I know the peaceful side of Miami too. <laughs> right. Like, there's a lot of nature, there's so many beaches, there's really chill areas too. So I, I can show you, it has everything. Right. If just, you go to Miami, you're getting a sack. <laughs> you've heard it here. You go to work from Miami, you get your sack. You've heard it here. You do what you want next. You are not. What you don't become focusing? Impossible. 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 <laughs> you'll do. I reckon you'll do four weeks. After that, it's a wrap. After that, I'm sorry. I don't think even. Yeah, it's done. <laughs> four weeks. They start looking back and go, yeah, this is. This guy's way. not serious. Yeah, yeah. Consistency starts showing up. Yeah, bro. yeah. Nah, yeah, it's man. different. It's different. No one works a normal day job there. I can handle it. Like rush hour hours are like, like traffic rush hour is like, or like 10 p.m. is traffic rush hour in Miami, like 11 p.m. Oh. Like that's when it's busy. It's like, you're not nine, not yeah. like nine in the morning, yeah, 5 yeah. p.m. No. None of that, bro. Like, like no one, like the, the hours that you work, it don't, don't make sense to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm going to come in February and- You'll see, and bro. You're going, yeah? Yeah, I'm going to February, but- He's booked up, bro. Yeah, bro. He's Just, coming. Are you, no. Why not? No, are you going to Connor? I've told him to come, but he's, he's playing, I he's playing games a week. Bro, do it, man. Then I'm going to Austin for a week after that. But yeah, this guy, he doesn't want me to come back. <laughs> <laughs> do it, bro. Nah, I can't, I can't. You back. can, bro. No, 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 no. No. <laughs> bro. You don't trust yourself. I you know. I mean, you can't. just know yourself. I know myself. Yeah, yeah. I'm not <laughs> no, that's more important. <laughs> if I go. You're not coming back. Inshallah. <laughs> it's that one, bro. Can't, I can't. Yeah. Oh, but, um, but, but yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it's good. I, I can't. I, I, once I'm done with this year, yeah. if they wanna offer me a contract and if it's agreeable enough, like I'll, I'll sign. You're happy like to that. say, yeah. I'll sign yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, like yeah. I was telling you guys too that obviously I wanna do that. You know, athletes nowadays are getting like nicer contracts with like Bitcoin included and stuff. Like I would try and get something that is a, a good contract still. Yeah. Obviously better than what I'm on now. Yeah, mm-hmm. of course. But I would gladly stay there, bro. I'm glad. That's stay sick. There, well, that's bro. that's always good, man. When you're somewhere. And you can see yourself, you can kind of, if you see yourself there beyond the future, obviously no one knows what the future holds. You always give more, mm-hmm. like from the start. Yeah, do you yeah. know what I mean? So you you know like, right, this place feels good. I've done a year here and I can see myself being here for the next two, three, four years. You give it everything. Whereas some people, let's say you was there and you you just can't wait for your contract to finish. Yeah. Most times than not, you're not going to have the greatest season or the great start to the season. No, you're right. You're like... You're drowning yourself in like, I can't wait to get this done. I can't wait to get this done. So for you to have that, I'm 100% sure that you're going to smash it this season and because you want to be there. Yeah. When you want to be somewhere, man, it doesn't matter what's around you. You give, yeah. you actually subconsciously give more. Yeah, you know, you're right. Yeah, so, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On, so, on that point, actually, do you feel like you're happier in Miami? <laughs> yes. Because like, I feel like I went on holiday. <laughs> can't you tell, bro? Yeah. <laughs> I went on holidays. I went to Greece earlier this year. I went to Barcelona. And like, just being on the beach, Around the Boston, sun. Boston. You, went, you went to where? Greece. Where did you go with? Athens. Who did I go with? Yeah. I went by myself. Oh, nice. Yeah, man. It was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you meet up. anyone out there? Yeah, no, I just, you know, enjoyed life. But anyway, what I was saying is the sun um, <laughs> makes you... <laughs> That's just makes something you, they're not watching. Makes you, <laughs> no, Boston's unreal too. Yeah, Boston's one of my favourite European oh, cities. Great bro. vibe. It's but so yeah, sick. I felt like I was happier. Like being in the sun, around the beach, like all the water and stuff. You just felt happier. Do you feel like living in Miami, in comparison to London, you're just a happier person? Yes. One hundred immediately. Yeah. As soon as you get off the get in the airport, you yeah. become happy. Bro. I'm telling you, you, take your coat off and your hat off, and you need shorts and flip flops immediately. Yeah, and it. you're I'm just done. you're just looking around smiling. Bro. I'm so like I'll tell you I'm this. Leaving. I'll put it this way: like when I was in Louisville, mm. if I would lose a, an away game, 
I would fly back to Louisville, I'd be depressed for two days because yeah. I pissed, I lost. Yeah. And then I just go back to Louisville. Louisville, bro. yeah. Bro, when I lose an away game, I'm like, <laughs> get me on that plane, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, get me back home. As soon yeah. as I get home, throw my bags down. Yeah. I'm like, my apartment would have a pool or yeah. I'm on the beach within an hour after landing from the airport. All I'm right. smiling again. I'm like, yeah. all right, all right, this all is, right, good. This is good. Again. You're thinking yeah. about it, but you're in a good place thinking yeah. about it. Yeah. You're, yeah. Not, like, you're not in the jungle on the floor thinking, wow, yeah. what is this? You're looking yeah, up. Exactly. You lost, you're pissed. You want to, you go through the game. Yeah. But, you know, poolside with some honeys yeah. like walking uh, past you, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> also, funnily enough, somehow, I, I do not know how you rate this, but somehow Miami was voted, not voted, like, the survey was done is is, is the happiest city in America. No way. Apparently. I don't know how you can rate that. Yeah. But it, that, it got that. It, it, they did a poll and Miami's the happiest city February in America. February can't come quick enough, boy. Bro, I'm, I'm, saying. That, I'm telling you, you don't want to leave. You won't yeah. want to just bring a nice, you know, bring a nice account, little yeah. account. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I'll be all right. I'll be but all no, right. we can, yeah, no, either yeah. way. Nah. Like that's what I'm saying, even if you do the, the low key stuff, the chill yeah. stuff, there's there's enough culture and fun there, mm. and pe- real people too, yeah, yeah. that just are social and welcome you in. Like, you can't beat sounds them. mad. I can't lie. Yeah, I can't wait, man. Another big <laughs> one for me is the access to tropical fruits as well. You know, I'm a big diet yeah, man, yeah, and yeah. like fruits and juice, juicing fruits and eating fruits is like. I, I try and make it at least 50, 60% of what I eat in a day. Okay. And so I'm so much closer to the fruit. It doesn't have to travel as far, you know. Yeah, like yeah. We can get More good fruits here. variation as well. Yeah, too. exactly. Fruits I've never seen before. Yeah, mm. yeah. Just like the women, bro. <laughs> 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 yeah. you're you're getting too, you're getting me too gassed, bro. bro you're getting me too gassed. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm telling you, you'll see combos you've never seen never before. Never seen bro. before. Never, bro. Exclusive. And they come with that accent. Hi, papi. Hi, papi. No, I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm looking forward to it. But yeah, Paco, yeah. thank you so much for coming down, man. We appreciate it. Obviously, I'm gonna link in Feb. Bro, let's do we'll it. Do man. a little little vlog or something, talking yeah. about it. Obviously, live. Sick. What am I gonna call that? Memoirs from Miami. I know you bro. gotta do something. Oh, Memo- that's a quick one already, bro. Memoirs from Miami. I'm uh, thinking that one. Yeah, you been. Can't you tell you from be. Con's not Memoirs in. From Miami. Con's not in. He likes it. <laughs> No, bro, memoirs, we'll, we'll make some we'll yeah, make some good we'll make, memories yeah we'll make some memories for sure bro but um yeah man also you guys have noticed obviously last week <laughs> abs was wearing hustle humble oh yeah he was wearing hustle humble last week obviously with his trimming these things trying to show me up i said what that, oh, you can't get you can't boys? get me a little a little yeah, boys, yeah, a little a little hoodie so obviously you had to shout bro get one sent to me thank you shout out hustle humble Obviously, we'll put the link in the description to go grab one, but yeah, I can't have both shining by himself. <laughs> like, I need to, you know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> but um, that's been the Detailed on Map podcast, and we'll see you guys again soon. Peace. Peace. Peace.